square holes with a machine that's better suited for making round ones. Um, there are several ways to do this, and I'm going to show you two right now. One, using uh, the, the uh, shopsmith in the drill press mode, and we're also going to use the router arm to make the, um, uh, the very same mortise. Um, we'll start with the uh, shopsmith in the drill press mode, since I've got it uh, set up here. The very first thing you should do when, uh, uh, when uh, setting up to make the mortise is make sure you have all the parts, of course. You have a yoke, which um, holds all the mortising stuff. Uh, the collet, drill collet, goes inside the yoke and holds a drill bit, which cuts a round hole. And it also holds a chisel, which uh, cuts a square hole. The uh, chisel follows the drill bit and uh, turns the round hole into a, into a square one. Finally, you have a hold down which actually goes on like this and holds the wood down against the table. That being said, um, the first thing you want to do is make sure the chisel is very, very sharp. Uh, the, this uh, does an enormous amount of work in, in mortising, and you've got to have those cutting edges as sharp as you can. You use this little conical uh, grinding stone. Uh, and these, these stones are actually made for different chisels. You have to have a, a stone that is matched to your chisel. Uh, this, the, the chisel is ground at an angle. You put the stone in here, and you just twist. You're just doing a little honing. That's all it takes. If you want to, you can add a little mineral oil or, or um, kerosene, even a little spit to help float away the swarf. Uh, swarf, that's a technical term, by the way, and it really is a technical term. It uh, means iron filings. And that's it. There you go. Nice and shiny down there. The, um, let's, let's start here with the yoke and the collet. These have to go on at the same time, and this is one of those times in woodworking where you really need three hands. Uh, you put the collet and the yoke on at the same time. Now, the character that designed this back in the 1950s made sure that you also need two Allen wrenches. One big Allen wrench to put the yoke on the spindle and then the Shopsmith 5 32nd inch Allen wrench put on the collet. I've got the yoke so that, so that one side faces either to the right or to the left. The reason for that is, is you put it so it's facing back like you think it should go, um, it will interfere with the hold down when it comes time to put the hold down in. Okay, the next thing is to put the chisel in. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to come up, up close again here if uh, Drew could help me. It's important, it's important that the, uh, the chisel and the drill bit be spaced a small distance apart. Uh, the chisel is actually flared out at the end so that if you put it, or the, I mean, the drill bit is flared out at the end so that if you put it in the chisel, it, it doesn't go through. It, it's, it's actually the same uh, diameter as the chisel is wide. If you put this together, whoop, let me move that back in. If you put this together like you see it here, the, um, uh, the, as, the chi as the drill bit goes around, it will cut the wood and then the, the uh, sawdust will go become impacted between the drill bit and the inside of the chisel. It will heat up and it will start to burn. That's the quickest way to ruin a mortising chisel. Um, you need to have a small gap between the, the uh, drill bit and the chisel. Um, you usually start with about uh, somewhere between a 32nd and a 16th of an inch, uh, or about the thickness of one, and I'm reaching in my pocket to get <laughs> I'm reaching in my pocket to get rid of my cell phone. 
Okay, hang on guys, I'll be back in in a minute. This is live TV. Here we go. That's what you need for a feeler gauge, one thin dime. Um, a dime is .050 inches thick. Uh, that's between a 32nd and a 16th, and it's a good place to start when, when you're uh, setting this gap. And here's how you do it. Let's take the drill bit out of the chisel. We insert the chisel into the yoke. Now there's a flange on this chisel, and we'll put the dime between the flange and the yoke. Tighten that in place, remove the dime, and put it back in your pocket. Okay, it is now time to put the drill bit in. And I'm going to have to shift the table a little bit, put the drill bit in and up into the column. Now I'm going to push the drill bit tight, well not real tight, but snug against the chisel. Tighten this up finger tight. Take the chuck and tighten this drill bit in all three holes. This evens out the pressure on the draw on the jaws inside the, the chuck and make sure that, that drill bit's not going to slip. You don't want this slipping because it's going to slip back up into the chuck and you'll have that problem that I told you about earlier. The sawdust will be will uh, uh, get in between the, uh, the drill bit and the chisel heat up and uh, burn up the chisel. All right. Last thing to do is to loosen the chisel in the yoke, push it up, and then tighten it up. Now there is exactly one thin dime's thickness between, between the drill bit and the chisel. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Now, we need, before we put the, um, the yoke in place, I'm, gonna, I'm going to just slide it in here in the slot and pick it up and put it over to one side for right now. Now I, I'm going to I'm going to raise the table up to where I need it, and uh, at the same time, I'm going to show you something pretty neat. I ha I'm going to go over here, over just off the camera. I have a little, uh, uh, and I have another camera, a little handy cam, and I'm going to uh, to bring it around the back of the of the Mark V. it on and zoom out and there you go I'll bring it back a little bit more here so you can see better see. okay yes that is exactly what you think it is it is a two-ton jack not that you need to all two tons of course however uh, if if you're like me uh, sometimes when you're or you're raising or lowering the table it binds on these weight tubes. It could be a real bear to uh, to move the table when the when the Mark V is in the drill press position. So go get yourself a um, a jack. Uh, put it b between the uh, the uh, base of the Mark V and the table carriage. Loosen the ta the table lock before you do this, and then just simply crank it up to where you need it. Pretty sweet, huh? It'll take me a little while to get there, but I'll get there. Okay. It takes a little time, but it is, but it it, it saves a lot of uh, cursing and swearing. The uh, remember to lock the table back into position. Now, one last thing to do. Um, when you when you make a mortise with this chisel, you have to you have to apply quite a bit of pressure on, on the on the chisel. The um, the table uh, will flex, and um, 
uh, it can, it can, uh, that can actually cause your uh, cut to drift. Uh, so what you need to do is you need to support the table at the front end. I have put these uh, extension legs on. Drew's going to pan down here in a moment and he'll follow me. Take the legs, put them snug against the floor. You'll want to do this after you've adjusted the, the height of your table, of course. And let's see, sometimes if you want them snug, you, you bring them down a little bit past the floor and then tilt them and put them in place. There we go. That's good and solid. Now, the, um, the quarter inch chisel doesn't need it so much, but if you go to three eighths and one half inch, uh, it can really get to be um, a, a, a lot of pressure on this table. You absolutely need the support at that, uh, at that time. Some people uh, actually cut a two by four and put them under, under the table to keep the, uh, to, uh, keep the table from uh, uh, bowing down. And uh, we also sell legs uh, that have a little clevis um, on, the, on them that will clamp right onto the front of the table and you can mount right there. Very useful and, uh, and something that can be set up much faster than the, uh, the legs that come with your system. Um, you can also line them up and get all sorts of uh, um, uh, support if you're um, putting square mortises into cannonballs, for example. Um, let's go to uh, the wood now. The, uh, I've uh, cut a couple mortises in here already. This is a, a mortise made uh, with a mortiser and this made with the router. I'm going to put another mortise in this size and uh, we, want, we want to start by actually, actually marking the mortise. Um, to do this, I'm going to use a marking gauge, uh, a small square, a, uh, six, a six inch ruler, really handy. I had to pick up one of these at, at uh, a hardware store if you don't have one, and uh, a utility knife. Uh, I like to use a utility knife uh, or an awl or uh, just a marking knife rather than a pencil because these things cut a nice crisp line. Uh, they don't go dull as fast as a pencil. Uh, Shop Gremlin steel pencils. I go, to, I go, I go through a box of, of 200 pencils a year, and I don't even use pencils. Um, the, um, the, and the other thing is they cut the grain so that, so that you get nice, crisp edges. Also helps lining up chisels. You'll see that later on. Um, the marking gauge. And I'll, I'll hold this up to up to the camera so you can you can see has points on it. Um, let's see. It gave, let's see how, how fast. How quick, there we go. Try to get this against my red shirt. There you go. So you can see the points. On one side, it has two points. Um, on the other side, it has one point. If I loosen the face of the marking gauge, I can slide those two points apart like this. Now I've got a quarter inch chisel here and I'm going to set the marking gauge simply by putting the points up against the chisel. Now that, there it is set to the exact width of the chisel. I'll take my uh, ruler and check it. Yep, that's a quarter inch. Okay. Now I want the the inside point to be three quarters of an inch away from the face of the marking gauge. Once again, set with this set with this six-inch rule. You put the marking gauge on the wood, put the face up against one surface, and drag the points, both points, across the wood on the other surface. Let me switch hands so that you can you can see that a little bit better. I can't switch hands. Ah. I have to go, I have to switch positions. There we go. When using a marking gauge, don't press very hard. Uh, a lot of people it, uh, press too hard and the marking gauge digs in. The marking gauge is actually made, made so that you, you, you make your lines 
in a number of scratches. If, if I wanted to, I could, I could take the points and scratch as deep as the points go. Um, all right, now I'm going to uh, turn this over and use the single point to mark the top end of my mortise. Let's come back around here. I want this mortise to be three inches long. So I'll measure three inches from that top mark down. Put a mark in here. Now here's one of the reasons that I, that I like to use um, uh, these uh, marking knives. Uh, with a pencil, I've got to, I've got to get the, um, uh, the pencil back on the line in order to make this mark. Here, I just put the, the, marking, the knife right in the uh, mark and it just holds it there. Put the uh, square up to it and cut my line. All marked. Put all this stuff back in my pocket. Okay. Now, we're going to put the hold down in place. It's important that, that you use the hold down because otherwise the chisel may become stuck in the wood and um, uh, it will actually lift the wood off the, uh, off the table surface. So, so put it in place, then tighten the post down. Let the, let the uh, feet of the hold down just rest against the wood. They don't have to be tight. And snug up the Allen screw that holds the feet to the post. Okay. One last thing to, to do before we, before we um, uh, get going. The, uh, we need to put a little bit of paste wax on the surfaces of the chisel. This helps lubricate it during the cut. Makes it work a little bit smoother. And we, uh, if we get a little paste wax up into the chisel, it also helps to lubricate the bit. Keeps it from overheating. Okay. Now, I'm gonna bring the, I'm gonna bring the cam around And get it close on the uh, on the action here. Thanks. There we go. Make it a little closer. All right. We need to line up the chisel with the marks that we just made. I'm going to bring the chisel down to where it almost touches the wood, loosen the table height lock, and adjust the, uh, and adjust the table back and forth here. There we go. Until the chisel lines up with the marks exactly. Tighten the table height lock. All right. Now. I'm going to bring it down so it actually touches the wood. Um, and I'm going to point the cam. I actually hit the button on the cam and, and uh, turned it off. I'm going to point the cam up here at the, at the stop collar. All right. Remember, the chisel is touching the wood. I want this, um, this, uh, whoop chisel to go down precisely one half inch from where it is now. So I set this to zero and then that's a quarter inch right there. That's a half an inch. Tighten that up and release the lock. There we go. We're ready to do it. Okay. Let me, let me point the cam back down at the, uh, at the wood. Now, when making a mortise on the, on the mortiser, you want to start uh, by marking the ends of the mortise. You don't, uh, the mortise is cut by making overlapping holes with the, with the chisel. Um, 
But, uh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. I forgot one thing. And, uh, folks, this is live woodworking, and you're, you're, uh, you're about to see me being myself. Uh, remembering right at the, at the end, when I haven't got, uh, when I've got just two seconds to go to make sure that this thing is properly aligned. What I'm doing is I'm taking the small, my small square here. And I'm putting it against the fence and putting it up against the chisel to make sure that the chisel is square to the um, to the te to the uh, fence. If I if I hadn't done that, there would have been a danger of me of me having a sawtooth looking cut. All right, you want to first drill one end uh, of uh, of the mortise then go to the other end of the mortise, and then clean out all the stuff in between. The reason for that is that if you don't do it that way, you could get to the end of the mortise and have an impossibly small piece to shave off. So let's... Okay, there's one. Now, look at how the, um, the chips are coming cleanly out of, that, uh, out of the side of the chisel. That's a really good sign. That means that the gap that we set is, is just right. If the chips weren't coming out, the gap would be too tight too small and we'd see some smoke. Oh, okay. Drew's telling me that I don't have to yell. Sorry, guys. Okay. The, uh, if the uh, chisel was... Uh, actually, I do have to yell to hear myself. Um... If the chisel was hard to feed, then we know that the gap was too big and it should be reduced. Sometimes a particular gap will work well on one kind of wood, but not well on another. This gap is apparently uh, working uh, fairly well on the... Uh, uh, it's working fairly well on the walnut, but if I would go to a stringier wood, say like uh, oak, uh, it might be it might be too small. The fibers in the oak might cause the uh, clog the chisels. So you have to pay attention in your first few cuts whether or not the uh, uh, the gap is uh, is correct. Uh, too hard to feed, the gap is too big. You see some smoke, no chips, the gap is too small, and that's the hole mortise. Uh, nice and square, smooth sides. Let's uh, measure. Knock out, out some of the acupunky out of there. Okay, it's about a half an inch uh, deep. That's pretty cool. Okay. That's it for mortising. <laughs> Thank you.